Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation Live Tech Talk. We're going to be coming to you live from Roseville, North Carolina. That's where I'm at today. Daniel Oh, he's over in Boston. Say hello, Daniel. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me, Burr. Yes, a really nice day. I mean, I'm living in Boston and a pretty uh, rainy day today, but I really love to join this call and I really love to see all people in Dev Nation. Yeah. Awesome. So Daniel is going to be showing us about application modernization. So if you have questions around how do I migrate applications from the old world to the new world, I can see James here on the chat already now. James has been talking about this migration issue, modernization issue with some of his people. Could be that some of you other folks have also thought about this issue. How do I move an old application to become a new cloud native style application? And that's really what Daniel O is going to walk us through today. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be some great content. Feel free to throw some questions out there in the chat on YouTube or Twitch. I'm monitoring both here side by side with me. And it's just going to be a whole fun execution of this moment, right? I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And if you guys need anything, feel free to ping me. I'm going to give you a link on the chat with the slides, right? So you have that. I'll also add Daniel O's link to his Twitter, so you'll have access to that. And then we're going to dive right in. So Daniel, over to you. Thanks, for Okay, let me share my screen first. Then uh, I'm going to be take some moment here. Okay. Do yeah, I hopefully uh, I can share my screen and you can see my screen. All right, all right. Uh, to, okay, cool, 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 cool. Thanks. So okay, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, cloud native modernization. Maybe you can call it migration, but I prefer to call that uh, modernization or death. People still misunderstand or mis a little bit confused. This is the right time to go move forward to modernization to the cloud native or cloud platform like a Kubernetes, Apache, et cetera, or we could be done. That's not true. 100 percent not true. It's dichotomy. So let me talk about why uh, it's not true, and then how do you do that in as a part of the cloud uh, native uh, some migration or modernization path along that your journey. So I just say, my name is Daniel Lowe. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major, specialized cloud native application and agile DevOps practice, and also responsible and CNCF ambassador and some DevOps Institute ambassador. And I recently published my Ansible book. Yeah, here are more couple of uh, information, contact information uh, to follow my Twitter and on YouTube channel and just feel free to reach out to me for any question about this talk or some specialty, my specialty and corpus, et cetera. All right, so let's get started. So as you see, we have a lot of different type of application and architecture or artifact or pattern. Uh, uh, we have been developed and running our application on top of the enterprise environment. Some enterprise companies still play with the monolith application and some company like a startup or some uh, e-commerce company already uh, living in the microservice uh, application with some cloud platform from public cloud or on-prem. So there are lots of spectrum to develop our application and serve your business requirement for your end user. So the left side, uh, most the monolithic application, and we can call that maybe uh, existing application, and right side is a new application. Maybe from right, from right, Left side to the right side is the the right path to your cloud native journey. So there are a uh, few options to uh, manage your application to the cloud native platform. But some people, okay, we don't do that and just retain or retire because some people already be happy with the, the existing application because we spend lots of money or effort, time, busy. Uh, for the last 10 years to stabilize uh, this application on my production. So we're not going to touch this application until uh, some of the application is broke. Or uh, this uh, super mission critical application, so we cannot touch this application for now. So, but the mission, even mission critical application can be, even should be uh, modernized the modernize it and even migrate to a new technology stack like a immutable infrastructure or a container technology in the public cloud, hybrid cloud, in the multi-cloud strategy. 
So there are three steps I'm going to talk a little bit more that. So first, the rehost, uh, also known as Rift and Shift, just repackaging your existing application with the lightweight uh, runtime or some not bend the rock in technology. It's a more prepared to uh, open source technology, just a repackaging, but small or minor change in your application side. And next step, we're going to re-platform your application. We change the underlying platform, like a, uh, from just a runtime, what framework, and then so even uh, infrastructure layer, like Kubernetes based the uh, cloud platform. And last step is so we're going to redesign our application architecture, uh, along with some 12 factor cloud neighbor Microsoft's application architecture. So we're going to use that expand the strangler pattern, even rewrite our application. So from uh, top to bottom, it's uh, more complex and uh, uh, much effort, and uh, you got to spend more time uh, to do that. But sometimes it totally depends on uh, the size or complexity uh, you are running uh, in your product environment. So some company already have some small applications, so it's really easy to just go to uh, re-platforming because they can skip the first step. So that's why, so my recommendation, you can start, you can start with the rehost and re-platform and refactor, but it totally depends on the, what kind of application you are running on your production environment. So some people, some, some cases you can start with the second step, like a re-platform or some, uh, some cases you can start refactoring at the first time. Okay. So here is my demo story today. So first of all, I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk you through how to lift and shift as a part of the rehosting strategy, but I'm not going to start from scratch. So I have already an uh, existing monolith application, uh, which is running on top of the Oracle WebLogic. And uh, it's a uh, pretty popular and many, many, many years ago. I probably done that a lot of time, maybe 10 or 15 years ago when I was Java developer. And then now we're going to use some cool migration toolkit and uh, the Red Hat support, and actually it's kind of full open source project. And then we're going to use the migration toolkit from uh, Monus application uh, to uh, lightweight uh, uh, the Java application uh, based on rehosting uh, paths. And just a little bit uh, talk about what migration toolkit for application. So this uh, toolkit, also known as MTA, is extensible and uh, customized rule based tool, uh, is help with the, the Java developer, even operation team, simplify the migration of Java application. This tool is used by any team, any organization for planning and work estimation and identify migration issue. And this tool gives some, uh, recommendation or even solution. And, uh, this tool also provides some detailed reporting and the BTN rules and the migration paths from WebLogic to JBoss EAP or uh, JDK 5 to JDK 8 or JDK 11. And there are, you can also customize your rule set or extend your, uh, extend your existing rule set. And one of the beauty of this tool, uh, you can have uh, uh, the fantastic ability to analyze the source code or even application ar archive like a WAR file, EAR file, etc. So there are multiple ways to use this migration tool, like a command line or web console, ID plugin, and Maven plugin. I'm going to use the ID plugin uh, for demo today. All right, the next step, uh, we're going to re-platforming this application to running on Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to use OpenShift container platform based on Kubernetes. It's a really super project OpenShift 4.5. And the really, it really, really fun because you don't worry about the, we don't have any, we don't have multiple steps to do this one. So I'm going to show you that thing, how easy to do that. And just before we move to the next step, refactoring. So there are some uh, region, region and needs from a lot of enterprise company uh, looking for the fast moving monoliths, uh, buffer refactoring. Because of many enterprise company already spend a lot of time and money and effort, uh, to invest to stabilize existing monolith application. Oh, I have already spent 
last five years to stabilize this application. We don't have any critical issue in last three months or even last one month, one year. So that's why they're really looking forward to uh, some rational or reasonable way to uh, still catch this benefit. And, and uh, based on new technology stack like a Linux container and a immutable infrastructure, aka Kubernetes, without uh, rewriting entire application. So luckily, OpenShift Container Platform allows that company to run existing application uh, uh, with some re-performing and repackaging stuff as well as, and they can run new Microsoft application. So uh, they can uh, make some fast moving monolith application pass. So the last step in this demo, uh, I'm gonna show you how to uh, refactoring your application using Strangler pattern. Maybe I believe some of people already know what Strangler pattern. So we're gonna just uh, get rid of some of the business domain inside the uh, existing uh, the monolith application, for example. So our uh, in this demo, our the monolith application represent online shopping mall. Uh, the name is Cool Store. There are a lot of cool stuff. You can buy it, you can order it, you can pay for that, and you can ship that. So there are business domain like a shopping cart, inventory service, and a catalog service, and a promotion ordering. And uh, there are big, huge databases to uh, store your data source. And then we're gonna uh, pick some of the application and uh, rewrite based on cloud native uh, runtime and architecture. So, so the Red Hat runtime uh, is offered. It's a multiple cloud runtime, cloud native runtime environment. The Quarkus, Node.js, Burst, Spring Boot, and then so Node.js is a JavaScript based. It's a really popular. Uh, to develop front-end application as well as the serverless application. And the reactive application, the port X provide a multiple thread, and you can handle reactive message-driven application, and, and you can also, this is running on JVM technology. And the Quarkus is a Kubernetes native Java stack. Uh, you can develop all uh, microservices in the cloud-enabled serverless application uh, with the event-driven architecture. And also you can package your application like a thin jar, not flat jar, and also you can have native executable file to uh, run uh, directly, like a Go program and a Spring Boot. Uh, I don't want to talk about uh, much that thing because it's an alternate uh, Java framework for Microsoft's application development. So we're going to use a two uh, popular framework for a strangular pattern today. And, it's, and one more thing, I'm going to use a Spring Boot, uh, the the based on the Red Hat uh, runtime uh, portfolio. So the Red Hat runtime, so Red Hat certified the open the Java runtime to run Spring Boot application uh, with some Spring Boot uh, raised version and some Spring Boot ecosystem like a core uh, data, web, and security, uh, even Spring Kubernetes. And also Quarkus provides Spring API compatibility, uh, which means you can run uh, Spring uh, compatibility API application like a Spring Web, Spring uh, Data without any change and running on top of the uh, Quarkus. And uh, why do you do that? Because you have a, such a great benefit of a Quarkus like a native compilation and a live query and unified uh, configuration, etc. All right, so this is a comparison between uh, traditional Java stack and Quarkus. So I'm I'm going to show a little bit more during the demo, all right? Okay, so I'm going to stop talking here, and let's jump into the uh, demo today. I'm going to start the present mode. I'm going to switch it to another my web browser. So hopefully you can see my ID tool. Well, this is the uh, web IDE. The name is a core ready workspace fit on Eclipse chair. So you don't need to install any software ahead of time on your Local machine, you just go to uh, the uh, public URL uh, using your preferred web browsers. In my case, I just using Chrome browser and go to the access to here. So this uh, core radio workspace uh, actually running on top of the OpenShift container platform as a path. So I just uh, access this core radio space. 
uh, to go through the, this demo. I already download, uh, clone my sample application. Here is a monolith application. And then here is the, uh, inventory. We're going to use that, uh, to create, uh, to strangler, uh, strangle our monolith application, this catalog. So we're going to, uh, also strangle monolith application, uh, running on top of the Spring Boot. All right. So first step, we're going to, uh, uh, the re, uh, re hosting this application using the migration toolkit for application. So once you go to here, the so migration toolkit for application is already, uh, enabled our core uh, workspace as the ID plugin. So click on the MTA grade configuration. We're going to use the, we're going to create a new MTA configuration, how to migrate. So first of all, I'm going to input, uh, the source code. Uh, or you can add any uh, artifact file, like a WAV file, EO file, JAW file. So I'm going to select the monolith app, entire monolith application here. And a target server or even technology, okay, I'm going to use the JWS EAP7. And also, uh, uh, I'm going to specify the source server technology. So this application running on WebLogic. And there are a lot of more of the source technology here. So I'm going to just leave uh, all, uh, parameter as default today. And then we're going to run, uh, migration toolkit. So once you run the migration tool, you can see here the CLI, uh, the migration CLI automatically, here we go, automatically running on inside your core ready workspace container. So you don't need to download any specific, uh, migration to key software on your local machine. This is one of the benefit uh, to use IDA plugin, specifically code radio space. You can also use VS code uh, or code ready container and then an Eclipse uh, as the plugin. So analyze, uh, it takes a few minutes and actually it depends on the, uh, the number of your code and the complexity of your code when you uh, analyze your application. It's almost finalizing. So we need to need more couple more seconds to finish, uh, the application analysis. Okay. Just done. You can click on open report or you can click on in the left side of the report. Okay. We're going to click the open report. So now you go to the, the landing page of this application migration report. So here is the application name, monolith. And you got a 25 story point. Uh, the story point, uh, is sort of the abstract metric commonly used in agile software development in order to estimate the relative level of effort, uh, that needed to be implement a feature or change. So our, the Red Hat uh, migration toolkit for application, uh, generally use uh, this story point concept to express the level of effort to migrate uh, the certain application construct or entire application. And so, but you need to aware of that it, uh, uh, the, the developer skill set, uh, uh, it depends on the, how much time or effort do you need to fix the one story point. So for example, I am a uh, four years experienced Java developer. Maybe I can fix the one story point maybe in two hours. But there are some beginner programmer, Java developer, maybe they need to spend more time, like uh, uh, one day to fix one story point. It totally depends on the, the Java skill and experience. But don't worry, uh, this tool gives some more recommendations, suggestion how to fix that. Okay, once you click on your application name, you got some dashboard, the fantastic, and there are some lot of chart, and also you can click on issue menu. Okay, there are some uh, migration, uh, necessary, I mean, mandatory issue and optional issue and the potential and also information. Let's go back to ID tool and the click on project directory. Now you can see here source directory in a web application and Java. Yeah, I'm going to click, um, starting here. And let's take a look at that uh, startup listener Java file. There are six hint. And you can see here, uh, there are multiple, uh, issue. 
and uh, the, there are multiple icon here. So for example, the X icon here, X icon, the X icon is a mandatory issue. And this uh, triangle X combination icon is optional. So there are more of the, the variety uh, icon you can figure it out. Okay, this is a, we need to fix that right now to migrate. All right. So click on uh, the right click on your mouse and then you can find the view detail uh, about this issue. So for example, the web logic application lifecycle event must be replaced with the standard Java EV serverless context event. Otherwise, you need to use like a CDIB application scope annotation or the startup and the single tone annotation to migrate on top of the, uh, the standard Java enterprise or we change the name Jakar EE, uh, enterprise the runtime environment. So, and also you can click on open report. You can go to the, uh, web UI or migration toolkit. You can find the more detail here and source code here. And then here is the uh, problem uh, line on your code. So this is the uh, easy way you can migrate your application. So just click on, so let's try to migrate this application, okay? So I'm gonna make it more bigger, it's a screen here. So let's, we're not gonna use this one because we're gonna uh, rehost this application on JVS EAP. So first of all, we need to delete this one, uh, the application lifecycle event, and but we need to add the single tone is a b and uh, single tone and what else? The issue detail and the startup. Okay, startup CDI bean. Okay, here I go is a bean. And then we're not going to override this application, but there are similar functionality in a post construct, uh, and also here, pre story annotation. All right. So it looks good. And then we needed to open new, uh, terminal here in a wizard. Click on new terminal and change directory here. And then just Make sure, uh, our application code, uh, does not block. So just maybe clean package here. Just try to test the build everything, uh, just make sure everything is okay. Okay. So it looks good. Oh. So, and also there are one more good feature, you know, your, uh, Core Redux ID2, the version control here. So there are a lot of changes here because I tried to test in the morning, I would, uh, just check it on has check. So we just change here, uh, which one, uh, the start of listener here. Where is that? Try to start up. Hey. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a class here. Hmm. Okay, so once you click on bottom control, you can find the change here, and then you can uh, compare uh, the change, uh, what, uh, what is your change your code. Uh, for example, I'm gonna click on this one, and then you can find that, oh, this change, uh, this is a proper my code and this is after my code. So you can find that the change things. All right, back to the migration toolkit and let's try to see more uh, issue here. Okay, go to issue. And there are another issue as a mandatory issue, the web logic preparatory logo, so non catalog. So some of our application makes use of the web logic specific logging method, such as a non catalog logo class. Which he, uh, generally offers a feature related to logging of in internationalized content or clients of a logging. So web logic non catalog logo is not supported in JVC EAP or even any other Jakar EE platform. So that's why we need to migrate this part, uh, uh, to support logging framework on top of the, uh, using, uh, on top of the JVC EAP or even 
uh, the standard uh, Jakar E platform. So we're gonna use uh, JDK Roger or JBoss uh, logging, uh, JBoss logging uh, some class is here. So there are documentation link. Once you click on that, you can find the more detail how to migrate uh, based on JDK login. So we're going to use JDK login this time. So just make it here. So now he's a catalog service in the catalog service here, inventory. So kind of order service and we have a non catalog logo here. Okay. So now we're going to logger in a JDK and then we don't need to new instance here, logger and that logger. Okay. So it looks good. And we just needed to delete a need logo uh, info package here. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I just uh, leave with the the other all application code here. So let's try to uh, package it one more time the retest. But one of the beauty of the thing, the core radio space, you don't need to save your file. It's automatically saved, just like a Google slide or a Google documentation. So you don't need to save the file. It's automatically saved because I don't even try to uh, click on Control S stuff. Okay, just try to maybe package once again. All right, it's working. Okay, so I think it's the, we already saw uh, most of the issue. And then uh, another issue here is the, uh, the GND lookup, GND binding. So I'm gonna maybe a little bit zoom here. Okay, what about this? Yeah, hopefully you can see better. So JND binding, JND binding. So and the, at the initial in your uh, message driven stuff. So because uh, in this application, uh, use uh, the Java messaging service to communicate. And each time, uh, one of our, the application service, the name is order service, is a place in the application. At a time, the JMS message is sent to be, uh, sent to our JMS topic, which is then uh, consumed by the listener or a subscriber to that topic, uh, in order to process the order service using message ribbon bin. So formerly known as Enterprise Java Bean is AB, so which allows the Java Enterprise application to process a message uh, synchronously. So in our case, our here uh, file inventory notification MDB class is subscribed to and listening for message from shopping cart service. That is one of our uh, function or feature in our monolith application. So end user, when they on order, so so in the end user perspective, so when the new order comes through the shopping cart service, the message is placed the uh, the JMS topic. At that point, the inventory notification uh, MDB class the instance receive the message, and then uh, the the inventory service is a is already predefined threshold, and then send a message to the log. And indicating then some supplier of a product that should be needed notified as well. But unfortunately, uh, this, uh, MDB Java class, uh, uh, was developed for a long time ago. And definitely this is, uh, a part of the web logic preparatory interface to configure and operate, uh, message driven, uh, the beans. So the, but luckily our, the migration toolkit already deployed this issue and we need to already recognize, okay, this is a potential and mandatory issue to migrate to re-host our application. Okay. And luckily JBoss EAP provides even more some efficient and a better way and, and to configure and manage, uh, uh, to life cycle or message driven bin. So we're going to use the message driven uh, annotation as well as an activation configuration uh, properly to change this one. All right. So let's try to go back to our core radio space and uh, open to uh, inventory notification here. So I'm going to delete all code and this is just some solution. And then you can find that we're going to add the message driven. And also, 
there are web logic directory in a web logic subclass to process this message driven. So we don't need to, uh, this met the stop class any longer. And also go to web INF file. There's a web logic EJB, uh, XML descriptor, for example. Uh, there are, you can actually set it a lot of with some compilation using XML descriptor, uh, based on web logic EJB, this, uh, capability. But in this case, they just want use the one compilation trans timeout second thirty second. So we don't need to do this one any longer because we already uh, add app activation compilation property annotation to set up transaction timeout as thirty second. Okay. So I think so. We just migrate all message driven stuff. And one more thing, and then we have a palm XML here. And there are one uh, dependency group, the, the, the spec Java X RMI and the, the one that old spec is a pretty old spec and group ID. And the JVC EAP73, the race version and the next version, uh, uh, does not support this old uh, group ID spec. So we gonna delete this one as well. All right, so I think it's almost done. Okay, let's try to package it one more time. So I'm going to okay, so really try to resizing uh, browser really hard. Okay, oh, we got an error here. The start of class here. Okay, I just forgot uh, the delete on needed the packaging file. Okay. And I'll try to one more time. Okay, the build success test is good. And the nine is time to we're gonna re uh, so we're gonna rerun our uh, the monitor application uh, migration toolkit. Okay, okay, go to here and the. Run once again. So automatically CRI is executed and then just try to analyze, just prepare and analyze the configuration, just like we said, uh, at the beginning of this demo and then, uh, try to parsing all application code and, uh, try to expose your, uh, analyst report. In the meantime, the next step, uh, we're going to re re-platform this application into uh, OpenShift container platform. But there are a lot of ways, uh, to, uh, deploy your Java application into Kubernetes platform. First step, the containerize your application based on your artifact, like a WAR file, and then push it to your container image to the external registry, like a Docker Hub or a Quay IO, and then pull down that image on your Kubernetes cluster. There are multiple steps. It's really boring and, uh, uh, not easy. So, but luckily, JVC EAP have OpenShift profile on your Maven project. So, uh, you can use that thing and just kick it off the open OC command line, like OC start build. In order to do that, we needed to, uh, add one OpenShift profile in our Palm XMA here. So, it's already finalizing. Okay. Let's try to open our report here. Okay. We got to uh, reduce uh, our, the, uh, story point from 24 is now three. Okay. Let's try to see, or oh, which one is remain. Okay. So this is XMSD there because I forgot to delete this one after I show that. Okay. Go to web file. The monolith application. <laughs> Resource file in the web. I think I think already I delete. Maybe this already some caching stuff. Okay, maybe I'm gonna try to delete. Uh, target directory. Make it some clear. Okay. And then go back to terminal here and the clean package it one more time. Okay. 
okay and then just rerun application all right okay output is working here okay i'm gonna squeeze this app the my mta output okay so go back to the palm xma we just add the open ship the pipe uh, the profile so now we're gonna we already repackaging this application here and then now we are ready to deploy uh, this application to publish the container platform. So let me show you my OpenShift the platform here. I'm going to start close here. Okay, this is my OpenShift the container platform. I'm going to show a little bit bigger. Okay, I already deploy uh, Postgres SQL uh, because the our application uh, needed to connect to real data store like a uh, all the variables. So we're going to use a Postgres. So I already deployed the Postgres SQL. Uh, just save my time. And then there is no part here, the JBoss EAP, all right? So go back to ID2. Okay, the application is just the uh, fixed that, uh, the dip complete. And then in order to deploy in from my core ready workspace, so we need to log in up the cluster here. Now packaging here, I'll push the login. Oh, so there are some network issue here. Okay, I'm gonna reload my uh, core radio space. But sometimes there's a bad network bandwidth uh, making some error. All right, uh, hopefully it's working now. Open a new terminal, okay, and then try to log in OpenShift. All right, I see my username and my password. Now I can log in OpenShift successfully, and then just try to change my directory OpenShift to my the user one custom application. And now I'm going to uh, just make sure to, uh, uh, the packaging my application based on my uh, profile. Okay, done, and just make a little bit bigger, and then go to right directory, one list, and the we're gonna start up OC star bit and the name is cool store and we're gonna uh, using binary build from file and deployment and root one file. Okay. So during the this the OC star bit the and the, this uh, build already started and uh, when you go back to open the container platform now you can see. So build is just running here. So click on the path and the your build is running. And then we can click on the, the actual live login here. Maybe I need to make it smaller. All right. So during the, the time that we're going to, uh, uh, retrieve the, uh, our, the application artifact like a root wall file and then uh, create a container image based on JBoss EAP and we're going to add our application, uh, you know, the root one file on top of JBoss EAP. All right. It takes a, a, a few minutes or sometimes 30 seconds. And, uh, and then after that, we're going to create a new container image and push it into internal container registry inside OpenShift container platform. Now the JBoss EAP, uh, container is already, uh, pushed it to our internal registry. Now as a part of the source to image process, we're gonna put the image in an available Kubernetes workload in OpenShift container platform. And then, and the JBoss EAP, uh, just started. So click on Bureau. Now you can see here, the EAP is running up here. And then in order to process your messaging driven bean, the EAP already included the active MQ server as the embedded inside your JBoss EAP. 
K is almost up. And go to topology. Now you can see your part is up. You can see the dark color, dark blue color in your part in a circular. And then click on your open router. And now you can have a cool store. So this is the actual cool store uh, Red Hat provide in the same price. But this is, I just copied the product from the real cool store, uh, the Red Hat cool store. So you can find the Kubernetes, Kubernetes t-shirt and a Quarka t-shirt and then a lot of cool stuff. But there's only nine product here. So three, three, three. So that's the cool. So we just done, uh, just, uh, uh, re-hosting and re-platforming our app bonus application. Now we're going to move on to refactoring using Strangler pattern. The first step, we're going to, uh, break down our monolith application, uh, based on Quarka. So we're going to pick up the inventory service first because the inventory service, uh, just, uh, find your product inventory from your database, but Previously, the old data is stored inside the uh, big one database, like a PostgreSQL. But now we're going to use a single CRUD uh, database. And also, we're going to add the REST EG exposed in our REST endpoint, uh, the REST endpoint, our the Quarkus application to implement the inventory service as well. All right. So move on to project explorer here and then we're going to switch the project inventory once you click on palm xml you can find the uh the which version of quarkus you are using so in this case i'm going to using the race quarkus version the red hat support the red hat uh the red hat build of a quarkus version the 134 is the race one and the quarkus provide uh the extension features, which means you can add any the Java capability like a REST EG or a database connection or a messaging driven or serverless. There are a lot of extension focus provides at this moment. So in order we're gonna use the we're gonna add uh the the database uh connection using Hibernate or and Panache and uh, uh we're gonna use the H2 in memory database on my local machine. And in order to enable that capability, uh, we're going to add extension here. So you can see here two extension here, uh, the Hibernate, ORM Panache, and JDBC HD2. So once along the Maven plugin, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the, the Quarkus add extension, <clears throat> it's automatically updated to your POM XML just like here. All right. And go to source directory here. And uh, we have a two Java class. The first one is a Java file. It's, you know, we're going to create, uh, there are some skeleton uh, directory, but this is the, uh, define the model, uh, also no, name as the entity, our inventory. So, we're gonna, uh, first we're gonna extend, uh, the Panache, Panache entity class. And the, the one of the good thing of a Panache, uh, extension, you don't need to worry about to generate your unique ID when you, uh, store your data in your database. And then we're gonna use annotation entity and also you can add the, Cacheable annotation, which means, you know, uh, this application can be cacheable. I mean, you, this data. And also we need to define, uh, some, uh, our, the data field, like item ID and also location and also the quantity. And the last, last item is the, uh, link, the location of the inventory warehouse and the public constructor invent 
directory here. Alrighty. Okay. So one good thing when you use the Panache uh, with the Hibernate ORM as a part of the Quarkus extension, you don't need to add the getter setter to create the, uh, the Java beans because it, the, this, uh, the Panache extension automatically create and generate the getter setter for you. So this makes your application code simpler and uh, makes a uh, great readability to understand your code, right? And the next step, we're going to create an endpoint here. So there are two endpoints, actually. So first one is the just uh, retrieve all data from inventory, just guess with the get method, just guess all. And the other one is the uh, just find out the specific uh, inventory based on a parameter item ID. And then you can find the two method here, the get method, and another method with the return inventory stimo. So it's really simple to implement, retrieve your data using Hibernate ORM and Panache uh, extension here. And also, I already put in the old data uh, file here, insert SQL and uh, some specific data here. And uh, one more thing, I need to define uh, our data source here, the application property file. So one is, so you can see here the dev prefix. This is one of the benefit of the Quarkus, uh, to enable Java developer unify the computation. So you can find, you can start with all computation dev or product or test or even custom prefix. And then Quarkus auto wire, uh, the specific configuration when you create the dev mode or your packaging application, which means you just need one single application properly to deal with the multiple environment. So here I'm going to use HT, uh, HT database and the inventory password and the, pa the, I, the username inventory password, uh, the my secret password and the memex size. And uh, I'm going to use the drop and create generation strategy here. All right, let's try to run my uh, Quarkus application using uh, Quarkus dev mode here. So automatically open uh, the small, tiny the window on your uh, right side because they still need to run. It takes a couple of seconds. Okay, now you got uh, the uh, web UI here, the endpoint. Once you click on this small icon, you can see the the more your web browser so endpoint. So, we, so this application totally working here. All right. So, so now we just create a new application to strangle our monolith application. So now time to we need to deploy this application or push the container platform. But but for that. We need to add, I'm going to stop here. Okay, maybe we just keep the run this application and just create up a new terminal. And then I'm going to add a new extension here, PostgreSQL and OpenShift extension. So because we're going to connect to PostgreSQL rather than uh, H2 database in a production environment. Also, we're going to add uh, the production configuration here. So we did the product configuration and uh, we're going to use PostgreSQL and also there are open shift, uh, some extension. Okay. Let's try to deploy first. Uh, in order to deploy open shift container platform. So let's try to make sure our open shift container platform, I already create inventory and then there are PostgreSQL already deployed here and back to the ID tool. And I just change it up uh, my project, the user one inventory, and then I'm going to run maybe clean packaging. So when you using the packaging command line, the Quarkus just automatically pick your the prod uh, configuration, not that configuration automatically. This is one of the fantastic benefit of a Quarkus application. All right. So it takes a, uh, uh, it Quarkus extension, uh, the Kubernetes and OpenShift extension basically, uh, using S2I build, uh, in a source to 
image build and one of the build strategy in OpenShift container platform. Uh, during the this build strategy, uh, the uh, the build part just try to clone your source code and then uh, and then uh, packaging your application as a container and uh, push it to internal container registry and and then just download that container image in available uh, worker node and the running end. This is a whole bunch of step automatically uh, take care of the OpenShift container S2 strategy. But developer standpoint, they just need the one single Maven command line. So just done and go back to our topology and uh, just we have uh, inventory is already here. Just deploy and click on low. Okay, our carcass is running. And let's try to click on the endpoint. So now we are same result, just like we saw that in our local environment. All right. So this is really cool. And just one more thing. So we have a running over time, I think. So the another uh, the strangler pattern uh, is to uh, catalog service here. So catalog service, we're going to use the Spring Boot application because uh, you might have multiple choices to uh, strangle your monolith application to cloud every application. Maybe you can pick it up Node.js. For front end or for back end application, you can use Spring Boot or Quarkus or ProtX. Depends on your business use case or depends on your uh, programming skill and resources. So we're going to use Spring Boot in this case. So it's almost the same concept. We're going to de develop uh, the catalog of service as well in the database uh, using the PostgreSQL because when you go to OpenShift Container Platform and switch to catalog service, we already, I already deploy a PostgreSQL database because we're going to use the same architecture like a Quarkus application to uh, implement inventory service. In order to save my time, I just already implement endpoint like using uh, REST endpoint, uh, using REST request mapping, the endpoint service, and the two endpoint here product. The get all product and the, this catalog service to communicate inventory uh, and also there are specific Product using uh, parameterize the ID. This also communicate with the inventory. So how do we do that? So I already implement inventory client service using the Fane client as well as the uh, network the reborn and history uh, the the capability on our application. So and also this is the our service like uh, the. Uh, uh, CDI bin, also uh, the invent the repository uh, Java class to using the JDBC temporary or wire uh, based on Spring Boot uh, from your data like uh, ID name all data attribute. So one thing here, so we, I already defined a different pole 8081, and also we're going to use H2 database in my local machine. So let's try to run this application uh, on my local. Uh, everything is okay uh, to make sure everything is okay. Uh, so in order to run this application, uh, we just to use uh, Spring Run application. So go to here and change. Project and catalog here. The using Maven plugin, Maven clean. Right. So okay, uh, we got some error here. Oh yeah, typo. Sorry about that. Okay, it's being good and run this application. It's a it's, it's a lovely. Okay, it's being run. Maybe we're gonna skip. Okay. Oh, but we will have our problem. Okay. Hmm. 
Uh, oh man, I just skip the high dash here. Okay, being good run. All right. Two. Okay. So in next step, we're gonna deploy this application of machine the container platform with some uh, data. The property. Okay, we just start off Spring Boot here, and then okay, and try to new terminal here, and then just to code endpoint using call command. Okay, now that we got some problem and quantity is came from inventory service because we uh, using uh, Ribbon, uh, the capability to communicate between inventory services. But in this case, uh, it's not real access here. Because we go to uh, application property, now you can see here, uh, Netflix library, the Ribbon list of a server here, my local machine 8080. So now we're going to deploy this application to open the container platform. In order to that, we need to create a new application properly here the, under the resource directory uh, let's say application uh, open shift properties all right and this is a uh, different thing between quarkus and spring boot because quarkus you can just put in the some prefix to uh, differentiate a uh, multiple uh, environment with it, but you can you you can have a unified configuration. But in a Spring Boot, uh, you uh, fundamentally have a different app uh, configuration like a JDBC, PostgreSQL, and uh, you need to change your uh, sub URL based on Kubernetes service name. Now we need to repackaging this application. I'm going to start running on uh, Spring Boot runtime. And then we needed to change the uh, project and also we're going to new build the Spring Boot application. And start OC build just like uh, we just did in Quarkus using the, our fetcher. It takes a, a couple of more seconds to end up. And in the meantime, we have the, uh, the new app pod will be come up here when you, uh, create a new application. It's a couple more steps to, uh, uh, create a new application in remote open the container platform like OC command line, but rather than Quarkus, because Quarkus provides the open shift extension is, uh, the, uh, reduce the multiple step for developer. So now we need to add new application here. And, uh, we also need to expose the URL and go back to topology view. Now you're going to spring with the application just to make sure the app, the spring boot is running up. Okay. I think it's up and I'll go back to here. Okay. Still running up. Oh. Oh, inventory client service is not available here. Okay, let's check it out. Inventory. Okay, inventory is totally working. And just back to catalog here. Okay, we just the open application, open ship the property file. Okay, I think it's Okay, I think I missed uh, typo proper proper. This. Okay, and I'm gonna repackaging one more time. And then, uh, start build one more time and go back to here. So we're gonna be new build just to start it. And then it will deploy the application because I just typo my property file name. That's why, uh, the Spring Boot, uh, didn't, uh, pick the, the right property file and then just try to access the local, 
uh, Reborn server like an inventory, but I changed that uh, the Reborn server name based on Kubernetes name, like a inventory project and the service name inventory. All right. So we already running over time. The, the last step, we, we actually, we, we haven't uh, started Strangler in a monolith application at the last moment. So in order to do that, we need to add some, uh, the uh, cross origin resource sharing in a Quarkus and, uh, Spring Boot as well as the, uh, monolith application. So I'm going to do that at the same time. So go to here, property file in the Quarkus property. File and uh, I'm gonna add the true the course, and then I'm gonna repackaging this application. I'm gonna open different corpus here, and I will open that and go to Spring Boot. Okay, Spring Boot is working here. So now you have inventory, but there's no. This only eight inventory. So there's no. Uh, so Red Hat 8 woman t-shirt here. So something like here. The the woman t-shirt here. They're not here because we just delete that. I mean the new catalog item, there's no uh one missing part because I need to uh differentiate it between monolith application and the culinary application. Then also I need to add a cross origin annotation our core uh Spring Boot application in the endpoint here. Cross origin, and then I need to repackaging uh, catalog also. And just one more time, last thing is the monolith application. Uh, okay, monolith application. So we need to add the endpoint, new endpoint, because the monolith our the new. Uh, inventory and catalog is already uh, running on in outside the monolith application and the inside the monolith application needed to uh, refer the new application in order to that you need you can add some API gateway or some uh, the router in OpenShift container or nginx on top of the ingress in a Kubernetes but in this case uh, we just use uh, just just changes the uh, endpoint in a static code here uh, application and catalog item and then alrighty okay we just endpoint the new application here and then we just need to uh, redeploy monolith application also okay so I think it's so all application is already running up it's a uh, catalog is the build up once again it's a success and then our the focus is also uh deploy once again and then the last step is the monolith application is then okay this new build is just kicked out okay so just make sure the uh if one, one try to inventory service here, okay, try to one more time deploy inventory because I changed it so fast, maybe, uh, didn't catch up uh, the maven bill that application. So during that time, let's try to go back to OpenShift container platform. Okay. So the second bill is just done and now the, the EAP just try to restart and then, okay, it's almost restart. And go to inventory service Quarkus here. Yeah, Quarkus is a build, it's just starting. And I go to back to the EAP. You know, just try to view logs. Everything is okay. Okay, so messing server is up and EAP server is just started and back to the topology view. Okay, let's try to reload, uh, this web page. Okay, so inventory is still not up. Okay. I'll 
go to the open my page. Okay, still just push the application. We need to submit more time to finish that. So, okay, it's EAP is up. And the Spring Boot catalog item is already running perfectly. And then last EA, the Quarkus application. Okay. Yeah, we still a couple more time. Okay. I got us a couple more slides to finish to wrap up. <laughs> and then during the time, sorry about that. Uh, I'm a little bit out of time. You could do this okay. all day. I know. All day. <laughs> all right. Thanks for, it. yeah. So just to recap, uh, so three things of what we run today. So we learned about how to migrate existing uh, Java enterprise application, like a cool store with the online shopping mall. I know this is a not realistic application, but I want to walk you through how to migrate or modernize your existing application based on web logic technology is a preparatory and a band blocking technology to JBoss EAP, 100% open source technology using uh, migration toolkit. It's really easy. I'm not going to tell you, you need to start from scratch because this migration toolkit gives some more, uh, fancy way. Okay. This is, uh, you can find uh, okay, this line, this code is totally, uh, risk or potential error to migrate to, uh, target environment like EAP or even just OpenJDK, Apache Tomcat, et cetera. And then next step, we learned about how to, uh, deploy this a uh, new app, a uh, new packaging application to open the container platform, uh, along with a fast moving monolith strategy. Uh, in the meantime, we learned about we host and we platform. And lastly, uh, we learned how to strangle your monolith application using new cloud native runtime, such as, uh, Kubernetes, uh, the, uh, Quarkus and Spring Boot, just like uh, this, uh, this, uh, diagram. So left side, we have a monolith application cool store, and now you have a two new uh, uh, cloud neighbor Microsoft application. So catalog, Spring Boot, and inventory based on Quarkus, and then uh, you just uh, tied up between this application. And there are more chances. You can also uh, break away your front end application based on Node.js. Maybe it will be your next step and then, and, and so on and so on and so on. And after maybe six months, you now have, you don't have any monolith application in your production, uh, any longer. So this is the way. So, and one more thing I already mentioned a couple more times previously, the red hand runtime, uh, uh, upper the, the cloud name runtime, including Quarkus, Quarkx, uh, Spring Boot and Node.js. As I read, there are more, uh, uh, the application service and like, uh, uh, in-memory data grid and a messaging broker and a security capability based on single sign-on is a bit on key clock. So this is a whole, uh, uh, this is the old, uh, pieces of your puzzle. So in order to build your cloud native architecture, fit into your Kubernetes cluster or hybrid cloud, you, uh, providing serverless application running on event-driven application, so messaging broker in memory data grid and the single sign on this is a, not an optional, uh, stack. It's a the mandatory stack to build your cloud network architecture. If you're really more interesting about, uh, Quarkus development, there are three, uh, interesting resources here. So IDC report compared to, uh, traditional cloud stack with some great number digit or performance standpoint as well. And that they are interactive web-based, uh, uh, self-service running. Just go to bin URL, trash, try, try dash quarkus URL. And the code.quarkus.io is a project generator, just like a spring initializer. So it's a pretty awesome. You can add any extension. The kind of capability I already showed that hibernate or, uh, JBoss, uh, the, uh, the JDBs or, uh, OpenShift extension. You can add any extension. Or you can select your tool like a Maven Gradle, uh, uh, depends on your preference. All right. So I just get done. I just go back to our, uh, core radio space. Okay. It's done and go back to here. EAP is just running up and I click on the application, the inventory working and go back to, uh, in our 
Oh, it's a product retrieving error. <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe there's something misheard here. Okay. Well, I it's okay. Hear. I think we. I think maybe we can sort it out later. But the good news is, um, the is the GitHub repo for this all published out into the wild. Yeah, exactly. And also, this is a part of the our container and cloud neighbor workshop. The Red Hat provide for free. So. If you are really interesting and go through this workshop uh, with some red header, and then you could just people reach out to any red header, and then we can sort it out uh, this the online uh, workshop, maybe three hours. You can go through uh, the migration and modernization story, and also there are more interesting modules like a CI City or Service Mesh or even Serverless and Event Driven. Mm -hmm. Now, do our yep. do we have those regularly scheduled, or do you have to kind of book one? Ad hoc. Yeah, there are already a uh, planned schedule across the region in North America, APEC, and EMEA region. And also, if you ask uh, some specific timeline, and you know, we can uh, handle that. Okay. All right. So remind me of this later, because I might have an idea for you in November to run a public one that we advertise. Maybe if more people are interested in that kind of thing. Okay. Well, we need to get out of here. We are a little bit over time. We're a lot over time. The good news is there's no one else showing up on Twitch uh, that we were backing up. That's uh, We are the last session of the day for today. So thank you so much, Daniel. That was really a tour de force of all kinds of modernization, migration, the, the migration toolkit. It was really awesome. We had a lot of things in chat, but don't worry about that for now. Though, uh, Edward, I'm kind of interested in the pizza. You should have shared pizza with us all. <laughs> And uh, James yep. and I had a nice discussion around what it means to have the DBA push web logic in your, you know, development center. It's kind of funny. Oh, so it was really <laughs> fantastic. But I thank you all for hanging out with us today. I hope you had fun. And I hope, Daniel, you had fun, right? Yeah, it's a, absolutely. And thanks for having me once again. And have a good rest of the day. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. We're signing off and getting out of here.